Okay, today I'm gonna to do the replacement of a screen from a Lenovo 300E Chromebook, first generation. First thing I'm gonna do is remove these little boots here with the spudger. And then I'm gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver to Remove the screws holding the bezel plate in. And if you can see it on the video here, this is the cracked area. It goes all the way up to the top here. And a couple things when you order these. They are, do not come with a camera in them. So you're going to have to replace that. They do, however, come with what looks like a tilt sensor in them. Um, so you're gonna have to reconnect those and that is probably one of the trickier parts of replacing this. So if you're looking at it going, why am I going from this side? It's because I don't wanna warp the edge on the top here that goes along the screen. It's a little extra effort, but we've got that off. Now I'm going to remove the three screws that are holding this screen in. One other thing you might notice that I'm doing here is I have this piece of foam. This is what one of the previous uh, screen repair screens came from, but anything you can put down will work. Sometimes when you tip these out, you do have to remove wiring that's in channels on the back of this display panel before you can completely take it out of the unit. And you can get some cracking. Now, normally I would tip this up towards me, but I wanna be able to show you what we've got going on. So right here, the little piece of foil behind that is the camera. So I'm just going to peel that back. And this one came up pretty good. Sometimes they don't. You have to take the plastic spudger and work it up. And there are some channels that this all goes into. And then, so we're going to remove it here. There's a little grounding um, foil here just to seal it to the back of the panel. Again, stuck here. You just work it through the traces and take it all the way back out. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull up a piece of clear tape here, which is what holds on the connector. And underneath this connector, it might be hard to see, but in here, there is a bar that helps lock that connector in place. That's the main display connector. Okay, we're going to pull that out. That is, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I believe it's part of the backlight. So we remove that. And then this one right here, this little connector, this was what I believe is an accelerometer stuck to it. And that one can be harder to get out, but it's even harder to get in. That's it. Display is out. Put that in the pile to be recycled. Here's the new display. Everything's still on it. So we've got a couple of pieces holding some um, adhesive here, covering it up so it doesn't get dirty. We'll remove that. We'll remove this one here. And we're going to remove the one here that covers up where the camera goes in. So what I'm gonna do first is kind of lay this in here and get the camera one sort of out of the way and then we'll deal with the ones here. We're gonna use some of these anchor points here to kind of hold the base of the cable in. And we're just gonna work our way back through this little tabbed channel here. One thing I don't like to do is to stick this down too much until the camera is in. Uh, in fact, after doing several of these, I found it's much easier 
to do it afterwards. Now there are a couple of alignment pegs here so that the camera meshes up with the front screen. And we're gonna work this backwards here. Get that out of the way. Sometimes if you start at the bottom, that camera and this little bend here can be one of the most problematic little traces to try and get through. And we're gonna get this one settled in here, all the way back to there, and just press that down. In case of other tape is still pretty good. And we can just put that in the channel. That one's done. This one will go last, and you'll see why here in a minute. We'll pull this piece up here, put that over to the side, and pull this gently up off the display. Now, I don't know why Lenovo chose to do it this way, but they don't bend this over. It, it literally folds back on itself, and I can't quite understand why, except for maybe they're worried about it being damaged in shipping. I don't know. We're gonna take this one, just slide it in here. And you can do this before you have it down, and that might actually be a better way of doing it. Uh, I'm just gonna use the flat, wider part of the spudger here to push on that connector in gently to get it seated all the way in there. Not ideal, but it works. This one here, you, you pretty much have to use a spudger for this one. And the reason why is that it is in there stuck in pretty good. It does not lend itself to very much room at all. So there's very any room to get it lined up, let alone push the connector in. So uh, what I find, rather than trying to take it out and worrying about the adhesive coming loose, is to just work it in there till you feel it get into the channel. And it might take a minute. Um, once you do, you're able to put that spudger behind it and carefully, again, push it in there. You don't have a lot, a lot of force, just enough to get it to stick. We'll tidy up the rest of these cables here. And the last one is this. So again, make sure that this is held up. When you put the connector in, make sure it lines up going underneath. And you'll hear it click. If you didn't hear it there, you wanna click that little clip down. You might need to use your spudger again to do that. But you wanna make sure that's in there. And it may not click audibly but you'll know it's down in there. Okay, I'm gonna press that on. And we're gonna go ahead and finish up the last little bit of tracing here. Make sure that this lines up with the outlet. And again, always make sure too that you, if you're leaning over one like this, you wanna avoid leaning on the wherever possible leaning on the screen. It's a little difficult. Now, the way these screens go in here is they actually sit in a little lower and push up into a groove. So you're gonna put it in, it's gonna be a little low. It's gonna look like there's some spacing. And one thing we did find is take your time trying to align it. The last thing you wanna do is force it because it's very easy, those little plastic pegs to break and then it'll just flop out on, on an end user and you'll have to replace the entire back bezel. So once it's up in here and the screws are aligned, uh, you can, it's not the right one here. Oops. Um, you can put these in and just like anything else, don't tighten them all down until you make sure they're all in there. So at this point, I've got it held in place and it's being held up here. It might not look at it, but the plastic and the depth of the panel is a little bit different. So it won't always show that. 
And I'm going to put this over here. The reason I'm coming up the screen is just so we don't get the end users um, on there, but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and flip this up now. Since you can't really see that, I can remove this. There's a few other things that I'll end up doing with this to test it, but the, you get the basic idea. Once it's done, here's your peel. Not to, not G's two cents or uh, LTT style. It's not sexy, but it works. After that, again, to keep the screen from getting pushed on, I like to go from the screen side, the flat side, and then sort of push down. Uh, pop everything back in place. Put our bezel screws in. That. And put our little covers on, our little boots. Um, sometimes you'll get where the tape that's holding them in place kind of doesn't want to come out. And you can try tacking them back in there or you can do it like this. And that's it. That's all you need to replace it.